number seven for Charles Wicks Racing. That is another Ligier. Row, uh, row four on the outside, Roman DeAndridis in the Ansa Motorsports uh, Ligier. Alongside him, Cameron Castles in car number seven. <laughs> One of the four-cylinder cars, Tim George, and he had a spin on the infield as well. She had him. He looped it coming out of the International Horseshoe, John. The first time of asking through, Dr. George didn't quite make it, but he managed to look at what the guys are going to Oh, that was oh. on his own. That was on his own. And a nice bit of avoidance uh, by... Now, who was that behind him? Was that the 86 car behind him at the time? Dave House. Dave House. Coming through there, the downforce cars. He comes through the dog leg, through the kink. And does he get on the grass just a tiny bit? Maybe that just delayed his braking. Ooh. And then he's locked up the left front continental tyre. And from then on, he's fighting, fighting a battle. And he's lucky in some respects there, Shea, because the grass is dry. Yes. It might be cold, but the grass is dry and he's got grip. Had that been any kind of damp, had it been earlier in the day or we'd had some rain, he'd have been in white and blue. Ligier. Ooh, big lockup. Did he get the left rear continental right off the circuit there? Because these right front tyre was pawing the air going into the West End. Now, I think he may have damaged his rear suspension there. That car looks sitting like it's sitting down on the left-hand side. As he pulls away, uh, maybe not. It was going sideways for a very long time, though, John. And Kenton's going to have a lot of work to yes, do. That was coming is. out of the bus stop. And just oh. too, too much kerb on the penultimate part the last right-handed part and got airborne and again damage to the rear right hand side of that car when the car hit the curbs so these extremely extended aerodynamic diffuser parts behind the rear wheels are proved positions and rob rob Hodes has oh. done some lamborghini racing the last couple of years great catch by Whoa, our replay yeah. team trying to go down the inside of the 33 cars jeremy was saying they were battling after the 33 hit the wall on the formation lap let's remind you uh, in the hands uh, of its driver called, oh it's the 42 jim garrett. it's jim garrett who's just come out of the pits of course and he'll be on cold tires so a cold set of Continentals and Jim Hot 33 still with evidence of damage. Isn't is that well, another that's new off? damage. That was uh, significantly oh. more damage to the left front of the uh, Ligier for Lance Wilsey. He went off at the International Horseship. Uh, Josh Hurley, he will be seething here. Big mistake. Lock the front up first. Castle's going sideways then, yeah. completely out of control, and that might just get him a penalty. Well, remember, Castle's made a very similar move yeah. earlier on in the race, and it worked. He tried it again, and this time it didn't. Yeah, getting on the grass didn't help. Exactly right, sure. No, it didn't. <laughs> he locked him up, uh, just got broadside there, and it's a shame that, uh, that uh, Josh Hurley couldn't quite see him in his mirror no. spinning probably <laughs> and so as he turned into the corner he would have had no idea that the uh, number 75 car was going backwards show us lost his tire coming up through corner number two oh my goodness he was up on the 33 degree 31 degree banking and suddenly he doesn't have a right front wheel on the car the uh, obviously the uh, the crew uh, well, they've, they've got a few things on the mind. It's the first race of the race season. Uh, bolting at the early part of the, uh, this race weekend, we've got a car going around in turn number three, and that's not exactly where you want to be. Everybody uh, getting a good long look at the, uh, the car with a, a nearly 180 degree spin in the middle of the race corner. Half the car is going to the inside, half, half of them going the outside, and turn number three gets a little bit wide. Uh, around, oh, he get, Turn number two, just as they come onto the uh, the International Horseshoe, gets on the gas a little bit harder than he needed to, and whether he got touched, oh, there was a, if there isn't a touch there by one or two of the cars, certainly nothing dramatic. Uh, none of the bodywork has been uh, has been modified too. The 133 machine will have to go all the way down the charts to find the 133. Uh, Michael Fassbender has been 100%, and we'll 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 see the car. He got to perhaps a little tangled up, got off the racing line, and as he got off the racing line, was a little bit exuberant, say, okay, I, I've, uh, I've lost the spot to somebody driving down the inside at this, uh, at this corner. I'll see whether or not I can stay with the 90 machine. Sadly, we'll be, uh, we'll be taken out of harm's way before we get things uh, too far underway today. We may be delayed by a moment or two to, to make this happen. We'll get him another look at it. 
Coming up the oval, hard on the brace, gets it a little bit sideways, catches it, catches it, and away it goes. And back to catch up to the action on the racetrack. We're going to find out whether or not he can get the car back into pit lane. Just see how fast that happened. Oh, my goodness. Car coming up the back straight to 188 miles an hour and gets a little loose one way, a little loose the other, and he basically stands on the brakes and says, it's going in a straight line. I'm not going to. Car completely turned around on the race. Car's hard under braking, trying to make a pass, and he's, oh, he's going to run out of room. Maybe a little bit of a touch. Well, he didn't have any other place to go. He was looking down the inside corner, trying to find a, a way around. Oh, this. Uh, if if there there was a little contact, the uh, uh, perhaps the uh, the nine car spun the uh, and got collected by the ten. However, in, in being collected, the uh, the ten car with some pretty substantial suspension damage, got the car back out under the racetrack, and I would imagine he'd drive about four feet and go, "This isn't right." The car is steering itself. One of the rear wheels has decided to, uh, to go the wrong way. Driver, now did he get a, a hand there or did he? Do, no, he lost it on cool tyres. Back wheel spinning up and goes to the infield on the far side of the circuit from where we are. Not a bad. This, uh, well, the team principal actually, Jim, James Sofronis in car number 14. That's the battle now for 12th and 13th. Ooh. Train of cars though. A couple of Mustangs in there as well. So the gap's opened up to two and a half seconds for Spencer Pompelli. Oh, but a spin, and that was for Rick Parfit, I think. No, it's just for Sofronas, I beg your pardon. So the other Audi, Sofronas pirouette of the incident, got another opportunity to describe it to you, and it was contact with the 22 of Austin Sintrick. Yeah. That's what I feared, John. Yeah, just a little bit of a mark on the back bumper. Ashley got round into yeah. the outside of Turn 1, gets the run round the outside, hits the kerb at Turn 2. Sintrick following her down into the hairpin and then dives to the inside and it's not a smart move. No, well, it looked like a source. Doesn't have nearly nearly the same amount of experience. Mark Ramsey, he's, he's pretty new to the sport. He's done a couple of seasons in the uh, the um, EXR series for, for spec cars that runs primarily on the West Coast and uh, uh, Eric Bashar is one of the principals there, was one of the principals of that series. So Porsche, and that could be crucial as they head to the faster stuff now. Back to the tri-oval, 34 laps now completed by Stephen McAleer. And the gap was three tenths of a second. It's opened up to nine tenths of a second as the 59. Mercedes. Yeah, money clearly no object to that team. They have a BMW and a Mercedes. Uh, and uh, they were all ready to go here, but uh, it's another uh, problem with the brakes there for Ari Baylog, and uh, off he is out of the race. Um, we've. Uh uh, I'm going to hand to uh, Andrew Marion in a moment or two, but cars nose to tail and one or two of them thinking about darting down to the left hand side. We're racing once again, though, and it's a tremendous getaway for that Ford Mustang. The racing in both events. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm one of the luckiest guys here, w without a doubt, obviously, to be part of this Ford development program w with Multimatic. But then I'm, uh, I'm a pretty busy boy, but for a race car driver, busy is busy's good. Busy is good. Thanks very much, Austin. Well, certainly an action packed. Uh, year ahead or just few the number 56 car escaped undamaged hopefully it did seems to be i think where is it it's uh, it's come past here on the on this lap but 56 laps now completed now 52 oh. to go whoa oh that okay, okay. another well, number opportunity 99 car for came Jeremy and I to, to yeah. view the incident four cars certainly involved the 33 mercedes the 14 audi as we've mentioned of george kurtz the 22 Mustang, I think it was. Yeah, and he was the, in the thick of that, probably. Yes, 22 Mustang and the 99 Aston, which is not going to move. No, and, sadly. And the 22 and the number 99 car, they were they were a little way behind. Here, here we are on board the number 22 Ford. This is Chase Briscoe. Well, it was a spinning car. It was the 14 car yeah, that spun. spun. Now that might have been as a result of contact. And then the problem is. The 22 stopped in time, but then more cars presented with stopped machinery in the middle of the track. Yeah. It's a classic freeway accident, really, whereby you get a, uh, you know, a, a moment for one car and then everyone else behind can't stop in time. Massive damage for the Mercedes. Radiator sitting just behind the front of that car, and it's uh, significantly damaged the rad, but also popped. Three box. Well, I am trotting down there, and I understand we've got a full course yellow, so we should have a lot more pit action. We're just going down to see this red Mustang with the rear hanging off it. And uh, when I get down now, I'll, I'll bring you a report. We're not quite there yet.
Okay, well, the, uh, we the understand reason, the... The reason for that is, the co here we are, here's contact now. The slower cars are supposed to be on the bottom of the racetrack, but he wasn't. The number 11 car was in the middle of the road there. Number 60 car dived down the inside, coming around the bank. He made contact, heavy contact between those two cars. A lot of damage. And three and four. There's a replay maybe of what happened. Okay, looking for Jeff Westphal's Audi R8 spinning car, number 39. It all got very bunched up ahead, and was there contact? No, it was cold no. rear tyres and Westphal well, spins. Yeah, it was a slower Aston Martin kind of in the middle of the road there. He wasn't sure whether to go for the pass or not, and by the time he made up his mind, too late, had the jam on the brakes, spun it around, and then he just got clipped by Pierre klein -Nubing. and uh, mm. certainly Westphal, I mean, he was just stationary there. That was... Uh, and also involved, I think, was the 53 TCR Audi as well, which uh, yeah. went over to the right-hand side. And let's Gosh. just see whether the 53 car hit Kleinubing. Yes, off on the grass there was the Oof. 53 car. Nearly threw Kleinubing's Audi into a roll because, of course, that car with only four, three wheels on the wagon dug into the grass and relatively wet grass after some wet weather in recent days. And it nearly threw that Audi TCR into a, a spin or certainly uh, Klein Newby. Slide now the final half an hour of this race as we watch, was that the race uh, leader? Yes it was, yes it was, the 63 car of Aaron Pavaledo running wide at turn one and very nearly. Past to stay ahead of Indy Doncha, so right now it's a Porsche, Ford, Ford, with Scott Maxwell having moved himself up. Today, uh, by going I, straight on at the same point, just but a how far around in the corner was just he? Just locked up the uh, front inside wheel and drifted off, and once he's on the grass there, and it's dry, yeah. but it is downhill yeah. to the tyre wall. It, it's like the edge of a, of a soccer field that sort of rolls off into the advertising barriers, and there was really no getting back. That, that was a tiny, tiny mistake there. Johnny, maybe, I, mean, I don't know what, always suspension damage. On, oh, the, yeah, on, on the left front, it was a, it right, was a yeah. big enough hit. Suspension damage, front bodywork damage to the left hand side, and that. Yes, I see that. That now. Uh, can't find the car so far. Uh, high cloud, there was a little splash of rain just before the formal part of the huh? proceedings, and there has been contact. Left front of the 58 car is destroyed. Absolute. Absolutely destroyed into the pit lane and straight behind the wall. We haven't even got to the green flag, and the drama has been lined by 0 0.042 of a second. But Vautier got the side draft and came back, and there was the briefest and slightest of touches. But both so, so that's uh, I really must start the, writing these the, things down, but, Jeremy. But, well, so did I, and I forgot to write that one down, so I'll do that now. Um, <laughs> We are men of a certain age. Yeah, that's great. Oh, there's a bit of contact there for the uh, Acura that has been making its way through the order with Ryan Eversley at the wheel, number 69, out muscling Rolf in Eichen into the West Horseshoe. That was the right rear. That mm. Yost Racing, huh? Left rear, left rear. Is it? it was the front tyre, wasn't it? Front left. Oh, it is. You're right. My apologies, Johnny. And it's. Well, that's got a sticker on it as well, so that must have been just out of the pit lane. Yep. I thought I saw the sticker on the car, and that's come off completely. And, oh dear, that looks like a failure on the hub, because I think I can still see the wheel nut, or oh. part of it, on the hub there. Very nasty indeed. Pomerito at the wheel, by the way. Yeah, you stayed aboard that car then. And it was oh, on his outlap. Yeah, into the international right out, right horseshoe. Out, right out of the pits. Oh, dear. And, uh, you know, that car showed really nice, uh, good fuel economy there. It was uh, among the last cars to pit on each of the two rounds of pits, which have now been completed. Can we go, we'll go back, uh, let you make your point, Jeremy, on Fernando Alonso, who's... Uh, whose times were being very, very impressive indeed. And he's back just outside the top 10 again, now 11th position after that pit stop. Yeah, and uh, when he took over, the, when he, he uh, after the first stint, he was in 16th, uh, moved his way up a couple of positions, but m m more to the point, he closed it up onto the train of cars, which consisted of number 37, jo Jodakar, of Robin Frines, and the two Mazes. He was right with those two, having made up quite a deficit before that round of pit stops, and uh, he's still charging hard. Bradley keeping an eye on that uh, very nasty situation driver was out of the car and the pit crew having to expend a lot of fire extinguishment on that car but we have a good car and we are quite focused now for 
for uh, going for the win for sure for the race. Having to come, race. having to come from the back of the field, did that take the pressure off? Because it's a simple job now. You just go as fast as you can. He did a couple of stints. Ah, now there've been dramas for both of the Lexus. This was during the caution, and they were both down on the apron for a little while. Now, what was this about? Here as well. Let's head down immediately to our Continental Tire Pit Lane team. It's the number six, Simon Pagino, got turned around by Stuart Middleton. That's why Stuart's got the uh, the penalty. Uh, Andrew Marriott with his Continental Tire Pit Lane report. Nick Tandy from Porsche. I'm with Nick Tandy, who is nursing a very painful foot. He's ripped his boot off. And he's got a lot of ice on it now. Nick, what happened here with your foot? Honestly, it got overheated. Uh, no, <laughs> I left it under the, the side of the car when it dropped to the ground. You have to stay off the white lines on the track, but it just shows you, I have to say, I mean, I think that, is that a repeat of Bruno going I think, wide? I think that was, yeah. yeah it so, is Bruno Junker, so, but if you actually think about it, the, the standard of driving there, when this happens, I cannot tell you, John, I mean, you know what it's like, when it rains like this and you're on... Eight right through the carbon there. He was... Look, uh, Lando uh, Norris has not come into the pit lane and is now leading the race. Yeah. Uh, that's the second. That's the second time the 23 has led the race. It and, looks and scary Philip, from the outside of Bill Orbelin, by the way. He flashes his lights on the 63 for WeatherTech Ferrari, and then bang, the bonnet is cranked open. Like, it's like one of those old Italian sports cars where you used to lift the bonnet to get a bit of airflow through. It took two or three inches there. Formerly, you've got to say that Jeff and Simon in the IMSA technical department did a fantastic job. And, and these guys are not sticking a finger in the wind here. This is all done with data, data. In the order, the top Orica is Daniel Junkidea, by the way. What's happening with the 99 then, Shay? Came into the pit lane and did not even let its headlights beam down the pit lane. In, turn. in car number 31, having been struggling in the last stint, is now beginning to put the pressure on Renga van der Zender. That'll be the battle for third and fourth positions. The Turner Motorsport BMW absolutely did make contact with the tyres. Don Yao. Number th with the Corvette was right behind him, I think number oh. three car for Garcia. Whoa! Ooh, big off. Big off for the 911 car driven by Nick Tandy and damage on the rear, damage on the front as well. Did it just step away from him? That might be what we've been talking about, just getting out of the groove there into the bus stop chicane and there was zero grip, just a little bit wide on the entry. The car switched ends so quickly. Thankfully, Nick caught the tyres rather than the safer, safer barrier, but it's whipped off the rear wing of that Porsche. It's pummeled. Uh, dear Biggie Sims. Uh, will be with Diana in a moment. He was going past the Monteplas car. No, that was fine. Oops. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Coming up behind the 48, that is, isn't it? The Paul Miller racing car. You're supposed Felix to keep to the left, aren't you? Stay to the left. He, was, he looked like he was actually weaving. Yeah, just missing the braking there point. He is, yep. Easy to do on that transition. Your braking is so important down in turn one. It's the fastest part of the circuit. You've come through the tri-oval. That might have just been that he he missed seeing his braking. I've got to tell you, I didn't see him. Pagano go through, just yep. missed his braking point. Oh, nasty wiggle under braking. And, well, he's ruined that set of tyres because he had to lock everything up, gets down through the gearbox. Gets it restarted also. Looks like it may have stalled there on him. Yeah. A lot of pieces spread around the garage including a lift that looks like it's either taking out the gearbox or the entire engine from the back of this car. Definitely had contact uh, with something solid coming through the bus stop. Once again, Chris and the team have done it. Ah, he just took too much curb in the middle section. Uh, Spears off to driver's left. Once he's got on the grass, I'm presuming that's still going to be a little bit wet there, Owen. And, uh, He's lost the back end and put that... And his mom had to come down because dad was busy setting up the Petsky Supercars team. And uh, his mom had to rent a car for him because he was too young. And he's still too young for the record, by the way. But uh, I think he was about 17 at the time, maybe 18. It was uh, a lot of fun. We're getting ready for more pit stops down here, John. GTLM... Car Not to go up onto the banking. So what happened to Jörg Burgmeister? into the chicane. He went off the track to driver's left and possibly into the tyre barrier because the section of Porsche stripped off the car there as well. That might only be a bit of a dive plane or possibly a section of rear bumper. That looks very simple. So certainly in the 
uh, in the open wheel ranks for, for quite a long time. Won the British Formula 3 Championship in yeah, 2005. Yeah, Carlin, I think. Yeah. I remember those days. That's right. Certainly. And then a couple of years later, won the Formula Renault 3.5 series as well. Did A1 GP, GP2. Um, and then he switched over to sports cars. And in 2012, was the spin... They probably had a bit better setup overall. So, but I mean, who knows? We might get a little bit more out of it. So, well, thanks very much. The cool Spaniard, and uh, I don't know. He should have joined me in singing a happy birthday to Tommy. I think. <laughs> well, yeah, get it. Get the atmosphere Whoa. whipped up down there, Andrew Marriott. That, that Drama the... for one of the two masters. masters. The team Yurst cars is well alight, and IMSA officials very quickly on the scene with fire extinguishers. Now, is that the 55 or the 77? I can't actually tell yeah. from this distance. It's the 55 car. It's got the black, uh, black uh, shark fin. Right. Well, there you go. But uh, that was, I mean, that the, was the car work. that was running moderately well too. <sighs> well, but you're just not going to get uh, slowed down. And uh, what is the prototype doing going up the inside there? That yeah. is. I mean. Can you? Yeah. See? I mean. What I mean. I mean, I mean. They're side by side through there. I mean. I, you can't go well, yeah, side. Yeah, you, you can't disappear there. It gets super tight yeah. there, and so somebody's got to give there. And, I, it, and once you get on the wet grass, John, it, you got. I mean, it's still wet from the rain that we had yesterday. Yeah. If that's the, if that's the other way around, and the prototype's on the outside with more downforce, you've got half a chance of the prototype getting around the outside yeah. and being able to modify the line. Catherine is is in a, you know, a, whatever it is, 1,300, 1,400 kilo GT car. She's committed to. Together. Yeah, 6.17 uh, laps, that's better. Uh, up on the timing tower, 6.18 laps on there, 5.31, and 54, but it's Colin Brown in that 54 who is absolutely tearing up the tarmac at the moment. What year are we in? Oops, number 51. GTT battle, I still feel, has something to go. We've seen cars running out of fuel on the last lap here. Oh, we're getting yeah. inside the the last couple of pit stops now. Yeah, we're getting, more than we're getting that. there. We're getting we're three and a quarter hours left to go. So like we were speaking about earlier, it, it, the, the senses start to heighten again. You know, you've got through. You, you, and it's funny because you think, oh, we're. Lexus has had a strange off at the Western Horseshoe. Comes through the dog leg and gets in. And we've got the leaders uh, together. Yeah, yeah, we have. Yes, the... the as we see that Lexus whoops, what nosing off that. Lexus just went straight on there, Jer um, Johnny. Strange, and he obviously uh, had a. But it, it, it was it was it was over a minute, I think, between those two cars. I have to wait to he's, he's, he's on the back stretch now, Montoya. So I'll come back to that one. But certainly, uh, Rick, Ricky Taylor has gone out to now between the ninth and tenth place cars. Let's get a an update from Andrew Marriott down in the pit lane. You are at uh, the Hart team. They're running uh, an Acura NSX. Is the head or, or which car not most recently made a pit stop? Same same case for number four, number four and five positions. Number 78 car currently is ahead of number 32, which was in just a little while ago. And number 78 car, I would expect to be back onto pit lane in about another five or six laps. Oops, that was, was that a replay of Calvin uh, uh, yes. Bamber in eighth, Bamber in the, in the 9.12. So that 29 car has made it back to the pits. They've replaced the tyre. He's done a great job, and he is back out with a new replacement tyre.